Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be talking about the data preparation process. So we've taken our sample, we've collected our data, and before we can analyse it, or before we can pass it on to someone else to analyse, uh, we really need to do a little bit of checking and what we call data cleaning, which is where we go through our data, uh, we're looking for mistakes, we're looking for any problems with it. Uh, it's really good for us, even if we're not going to be doing the main analysis of our data, to have a good picture of what our data looks like. So how did people answer our questions? It'll also help inform, uh, inform us for next time uh, if we see people being confused, skipping, uh, giving funny patterns, things like that, uh, it'll help to inform uh, the next questionnaire we write, as well as giving us a much better picture of the results for the current one. It's been a number of times where I've been at conferences and the person presenting uh, a piece of research is not the person that actually did the analysis of it. And whilst it's really good to have specialization and so the person presenting isn't necessarily the statistician uh, you would really expect that they would at least have a little bit of an idea about their data and I've seen people that have just stood, stood there frozen and not been able to answer even very simple questions not about the analysis but just about the, da the data and how people answered so I think even when someone else is doing your analysis having a good picture of what the data looks like is important So we want to be able to review our questionnaires. We want to look and see whether people are actually answering all of our questions. If it was interviews and someone else was doing the interviewing, um, then checking the kinds of answers, how people are answering, what they're saying, uh, just to give us a good picture of what, uh, what kind of responses we have. With internet surveying, uh, some of this is kind of done for us, where we might have internet surveys where people uh, not able to proceed and skip parts because uh, it will force them to answer. So when we're looking at paper surveys compared to internet surveys, sometimes slightly different things. With the paper survey we need to actually check whether the person has answered all the questions. Uh, depending on how the internet survey has been set up will depend on whether that's kind of been done for us. But what we might find is if uh, maybe the survey was too long, we have a lot of responses where someone got halfway through and gave up. Uh, and so there might be a problem in the way that we're writing our surveys or recruiting our people or who we're recruiting uh, if they are giving up we're not actually getting good completions with our paper surveys we do we definitely want to check and see if there's bits that have been skipped uh, we want to look for patterns so this is particularly with the internet surveys where you're doing it and you're getting paid uh, there's a strong tendency for people to not really worry too much about what they're answering they just want to click through and get their Coles voucher or their warehouse voucher or whatever kind of incentive they're being offered. So we want to look for patterns. Uh, it could be that someone is just always clicking strongly agree or strongly disagree or they're doing funny little V shapes or something like that. Uh, some companies do have uh, ways around this. Um, sometimes in multi-item scales you might get reverse scored items to try and catch out people that are doing that. The other thing that they will sometimes do is they might insert an item in the middle of a multi-item scale and it might say something like, for this item, click on agree. And so you can see whether the person was reading carefully or not because if the person was just clicking and not reading the items, they've only got a one in five chance of having clicked on agree. So that's uh, some of the ways with the web surveys that we might try and catch people out who are cheating. Uh, so little variants in responses, if they're doing uh, all agrees or all disagrees or all neutrals or kind of funny v-shapes. Um, we can also look for inconsistent answers as well. If they say one thing at one point and the opposite later on, uh, it's an indicator that maybe this might be one that we have to uh, remove from our set of data. If it's a paper questionnaire, we need to check there's no pages missing. Um, another check that we might want to do is check that the respondents actually fit our selection criteria. Again, with the web surveying, we can put the screening questions up front. We can eliminate anyone that doesn't meet our criteria. But with a paper survey, we might just want to do a check, uh, make sure that we are actually getting the people that we want. So, um, 
with a paper survey, we have the issue of illegible responses. It's not an issue with the web ones, uh, but with both, we may have incomplete, uh, we may have inconsistent, or we have ambiguous responses. So we need to decide what we're going to do with these. If we think that the person just hasn't taken the questionnaire seriously, uh, then we might just eliminate them. We might just not include their results. If we think for maybe just a particular question, the person misread it or got a little bit confused, then maybe we won't use that that part of their questionnaire, but maybe we will use the rest. Uh, it's very much up up to up to you to have a look and try and decide whether there is some quality data or no quality data being provided. So from here, um, the next part of our data cleaning is to go through. Uh, we can look for uh, unusual responses, so out of range uh, means when someone's answered something that's not really a, uh, a proper response. Sometimes it might, uh, might be an extreme value sometimes it might just be nonsense. So you can imagine that if we asked someone for their age and they wrote 345, um, that's kind of both an extreme value and out of range in, this, in the sense that uh, unless they seem to think they're some sort of vampire, that's not how old they are. With the web survey we can catch those as we go. With paper survey we kind of have to deal with them after the fact. Um, out of range could also be that it said what is your age and they typed in an X. So the X is clearly not a valid response. Uh, again with the web survey we can uh, have have that caught there and then and prompt them to put in a proper age uh, but if it's paper survey we'll have to deal with it afterwards. If they maybe just didn't want to put in their age and the rest of their survey looks okay then maybe we will just have a um, have, the, have a missing value for that particular variable but keep the rest of what the person has done. We can look for logical inconsistencies as well. So if we've got questions that are asking similar things at different parts in our survey, we can see whether what person's saying in one part is matching up with what they're saying in another. One other consideration that we have when we're looking at our data is non-response. So non-response is the people that didn't complete the survey or the interview or whatever data collection we're doing. And so this can create uh, particular errors and bias and it's a biggest issue when the people who did not complete the survey are somehow different from the people who did. So you can imagine in my population uh, maybe it's 51% female and 49% male but in my survey it was 90% female and 10% male. So this is pretty different. We were seeing um, and particularly if we were able to find out the gender of the people who were choosing not to do the survey. So we were offering people the survey and maybe men for some reason just kept turning it down. If the responses of men and women are quite different uh, in whatever data we're measuring, then our responses are going to be very biased. Sometimes we can address this uh, with doing a little bit of uh, statistical technique called weighting, uh, where we might weight the results. So we add, kind of add um, more importance and less importance to some, uh, some of our people than others in order to try and correct for having uh, too many of one group or not enough of another group. Um, and this, this can sometimes solve the problem, but not always. So it is something we need to watch out for. Uh, ideally, if we, we want to try and set up a survey which is appealing to people and so people do respond to it. Um, and so depending on what kind of data we're collecting, how we're going about it, uh, you can imagine if you just receive something in the letterbox and it says here's a survey, do the survey, uh, you're probably, a good many of you will just throw it in the recycle bin. Uh, perhaps if it came with a, a return envelope so you don't have to worry about a stamp and posting it, maybe maybe you'll, uh, a few more of you might complete it. Maybe if the person got a letter in advance um, saying that there was a survey coming to them and here's, here's what it's about and here's why you'd like them to do it, then maybe a few more of them will do it. 
So the way that you, you set up your data collection and do your data collection can have a bit of an impact on the non-response. After the fact though, we do want to investigate it. So we do want to check, was there any differences between the people that were responding and the people that weren't? This has been a Swinburne production.